Hey guys, welcome back. We're going to learn about the synchronous motor now. And uh, synchronous motor is a unique AC motor because, and it's called synchronous motor because it runs at sync speed, okay? It does not slip. Uh, any AC motor that runs or is designed to run at its sync speed is called a synchronous motor. Now we're going to look at the three phase synchronous motor and uh, see how, exactly how it works. Now the first thing I want you to notice is that it has the same stator winding that every other AC induction motor has, okay? It has a stator winding, it's going to be two pole or four pole, whatever, it's going to have a sync speed of you know, 1800 RPM or 3600 RPM, whatever, based on how many number of poles it is. The difference is in how the actual rotor is wired again. Now, the rotor actually is made up of two, you know, windings. One is the squirrel cage winding, which is the normal winding that you see in every AC induction motor. It is the big chunk of steel with the aluminum bars in it. It is called the amateur worn, uh, amateur winding in the synchronous motor okay guys but don't be you know afraid of that word it is just the aluminum bars the squirrel cage winding that's in there but the other winding that you're going to find in a synchronous motor is what's known as the same the salient field poles and the salient field poles guys they are just a dc winding that is in the rotor itself that I'll, you know, that you can turn on and it causes the rotor to have, you know, magnetic, to be an active magnet basically. Okay. And so here you can see the salient field poles and it says here, this is connected to an external DC source. And basically if you turn on that DC source, it turns the rotor into an electromagnet. Now the way this thing is going to work is you are going to leave the DC source disconnected from the salient field poles. You're gonna start this motor by energizing the three phase um, stator winding. It is going to you know, start to rotate at sync speed. The fact that it has the squirrel cage winding is going to cause this motor to spin up and slip and it will be running exactly like any other induction motor at this point, okay? But once it is running and at close to sync speed, you will turn on the DC supply that feeds the salient field poles and that will cause the rotor to actually have, you know, magnetic poles and those magnetic poles will lock onto the sync speed and it will be running at exactly sync speed, okay? And you can put tons of load on this machine. It will not slip because the salient field poles are, you know, magnetically connected you know, to the rotating magnetic field, okay? And that's basically how this thing works. It needs to be started with the salient field poles off, though, because if you have them on and then start up the three-phase, you know, uh, stator winding, well, that would be kind of like sitting on the side of the road on a bicycle with, a you know, 50 feet of rope and a hook, and waiting for a semi truck to come by, and then as soon as you see a semi truck, you whip that hook out and see if you can hook it onto the front bumper, and then see if you can like catch up to the, you know, to the truck. And you're going to go from zero to 100 miles an hour in you know 60 miles an hour in zero seconds, right? And it's going to be very very violent. And it's exactly the same thing with this thing. If I turn these salient field poles on and then turn the three phase on, the three phase goes from zero to you know 1800 RPM in zero seconds. And the rotor will try to do that as well because it can't slip, or at least it's very, very difficult for it to slip. And this thing will bounce, you know, right off of its mount, and it'll blow all the fuses, and it'll be, you know, a whole bunch of other horrible things. Okay, guys? And so this thing is always started up in a sequence. First, the three phase gets started up. It will spin up and run at sync speed minus the slip, okay? you know, the 50 RPM that it wants to slip, and then you will turn on the salient field pulse, and it will kind of give a bit of a jerk, okay? And it'll catch up those last 50 RPM, and it'll run just fine like that. Now, the cool, I don't know, cool thing about a synchronous motor, three-phase synchronous motor, guys, it is possible to get this thing to have a lagging power factor, a unity power factor, or a leading power factor. And uh, 
So it is kind of the only AC motor that you can actually run at a leading power factor. And I'm going to show, you know, why that is here for a second with a couple of drawings, okay? So the first drawing I'm going to make is, you know, a picture of the stator winding here. Let's just draw that real quick, okay? And so not too fancy. We'll make a two-polar here. And there's our scene. Uh, you know, this is north and this is south. And let's say this thing is running at sync speed. And so I've got a, you know, a synchronous speed going here. And here's the actual rotor, guys. And it's sitting, uh, you know, the, sail, the salient field poles, guys, are on. Okay. So here's the rotor that's inside there. And, you know, I've got a rotating magnetic field that's going like that. And then I've got, you know, this is south and this is north because that winding has been connected. And it's also going like that, right? And what you will have is a bunch of flux here between the uh, you know, rotating magnetic field and the rotor itself. Now I want you to notice that I drew it offset just a little bit and that will happen because you know, let's say there's a bit of a load on this machine, or even if there isn't, there's always going to be a slight lag between the rotor and the stator because, you know, it's turning and there's friction and things like that. And so, yes, it will be following, and yes, it will not be slipping, but these, you know, this field flux here will be stretched ever so slightly. And so what this lag is is known as the torque angle, okay? Whoops. And the torque angle is just the slight misalignment between the rotating magnetic field in the stator and the rotating rotor, okay? And that's the torque angle. Now, let's take a look at how that affects how this thing is going to work. And by the way, on this particular motor, it works a lot like a DC motor now because, you know, it relies on counter EMF to limit the stator current. If you recall from, you know, DC motors, you know, do I get into it, guys? Let's leave it, okay? But trust me when I say there is a voltage applied to the stator, okay, and the current would be really high, and then as this thing whips by here, it induces a voltage into the stator winding which opposes the applied voltage, and that fact limits the stator current okay the stator current is going to be limited by the counter emf that's being induced into it because this thing is rotating and, in, and inducing a voltage into it as it goes by so let's take a look at it with a bunch of phasers here for a second and uh, we'll see what happens and you know these drawings are in your book okay but i just want you to see them drawn once here what i have here is uh, the applied voltage right here, okay? So this is the applied, and this might be two videos, okay, guys? I'm not sure, or else I'll make it a really long one. Okay, so there's my applied voltage, guys. Now, that's supplied three-phase uh, stator uh, voltage, guys, but there's also going to be, you know, a counter EMF that opposes it that's going to limit the actual uh, applied voltage and therefore limit the current in the stator but I want you to notice that when this whips by the stator this is going to whip by also but it's going to lag slightly okay and so if I wanted to draw it the um, you know the counter EMF would lag a bit it would be kind of here um, lagging slightly okay so this is the CEMF Okay, guys? And it's opposing the applied, okay? So the arrow is over here. So you've got the applied voltage and the counter EMF. There's slight lag between them. And if I want to see what's going on with the actual stator voltage, the net stator voltage, I have to, you know, subtract these. And so I'm going to take this one and I'm going to move it tip to tail, okay, guys? And it's going to sit right like that. There's my CEMF. And this is, you know, confusing, okay? I'm not going to lie. I know that, okay? But this line, which is the sum of the two, okay, and we've, you know, kind of gotten rid of that. 
this line right here, this is the net stator voltage. Okay, this line right there. That's the sum of the applied voltage and the counter EMF. Now, the current, guys, in this stator is going to lag the stator voltage by quite a bit because this is a big inductor, right? So if I drew the current, it would be almost 90 degrees, not quite, you know. This is going to be the uh, stator current, okay? Okay, guys, and I want you to notice that uh, here's the applied voltage. It's this line right here, okay? And this is the state of current. And so if I looked at the voltage and the current for this machine, I would see this blue line as the voltage, and I would see the state of current, which would be lagging the applied voltage by a little bit, but look, it it lags the actual net stator voltage by almost 90 degrees because it's just a giant inductor. And so this particular machine right now, guys, would be running with a lagging current. So how do I make this machine run with a you know, unity power factor in phase current or even a leading current? And the answer is you turn up the salient field pole voltage, okay? Because if you increase the DC voltage that's feeding the salient field poles, it will make the salient field poles stronger. And if you make the salient field poles stronger, they will induce a bigger voltage, counter EMF, into the stator winding. And so if I drew that, it would look exactly the same, okay? I would have the applied voltage here, guys. So this is lagging slightly, right? There's my applied voltage. I think we're just gonna make this video long, okay? And it still has the same counter EMF, that one right there, guys. And it's gonna subtract from the applied voltage, but we're gonna make that line a little bit longer because the applied voltage EMF, the counter EMF is now larger because I've increased the strength of this magnetic field. So here's my CEMF, okay guys? And again, this line right here is going to be the net stator voltage. It's the difference between the applied voltage and the counter EMF. Now, again, we still have this big lagging current in the stator, almost 90 degrees, but I want you to notice that we've just moved this up this way a little bit, okay, by making this line longer. This line is still the same. So if I go with my almost 90 degrees here, here is my stator current, okay? And what we've done here is we've increased this DC supply slightly to cause this thing to run at unity, okay? There it is. Now there's one more scenario I can make it lead, and to make it lead, I just increase the salient field pole voltage even more, make this magnet even stronger, making the counter EMF even greater. And so I'm gonna draw that right over here. I still have the applied. Okay, I still have my counter EMF. It's even greater than the applied voltage now. I still have my net, you know, the difference between the two. Okay. It's still causing the current to lead by almost 90 degrees. But I want you to notice now that if I take a look at the applied voltage and the stator current, the current is a leading, okay? And so, yes, I know this is confusing, okay, guys? All this is explained in your book, and I want you to read your book, okay, where there's a section on synchronous motors. 
But this machine can be used and can run at a leading power factor. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, because you can use it as a capacitor, basically. Okay, if you have a poor power factor in your factory and you want to, you know, improve it and you happen to have a synchronous motor, you can set your synchronous motor so that it's leading slightly, okay, slightly or even a lot. And uh, it'll take care of part of your power factor correction problem, okay. But, you know, is this done strictly for power factor correction? I doubt it, okay, because uh, why would you buy a synchronous motor? This thing is expensive, man. It's the most expensive, you know, three-phase motor you can buy, basically. Wound rotor motors are expensive too, by the way. Um but uh, so you wouldn't buy one of these to do, you know, power factor correction. But if you had one, you might want to run it at a, at a leading power factor. It's easy to do. Just turn the DC voltage up a bit. You know, it'll be running at a, at a unity or better power factor. And uh, why would you want one of these? Well, there are some applications that require, you know, precise speed control or precise speed where you can't live with the slip or the amount of variation in the speed that you get with an induction motor, even though it's only a couple of percent, right? Uh, an irregular induction motor is going to run close to its sync speed, but, you know, depending on how much load it's going to have, it's going to slip, you know, 20 to 50 to 75 RPM. You know, maybe you can't live with that. And if you can't live with that in your application, you might have to use a synchronous motor. Okay. And the beauty of it is you can run it at a power factor that's, you know, greater than one. So interesting, right guys? Power factor greater than one. Uh, a leading power factor. Let's go with that. All right, guys. So uh, stick around for the next video. We're going to cover a bunch more motors, and then maybe we'll get be you know getting really close to done. If you want to do your homework assignment on synchronous motors, guys, you know keep flipping here. Right? There is one. It's Unit Five, Handout Five. Okay, guys. Have a great day.